Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Devney and I hope you all had a great Christmas or holiday or whatever else it is that you do celebrate. The day that I am recording today is in fact Christmas, so Merry Christmas to me. But yeah, today I'm bringing you our last, probably our last video of 2020, but for sure our last monthly reads of 2020. It's also the year end roundup of all the books that I read, so stay tuned for that. But before we get started, please hit that like and subscribe button. Let's do this. It's December and I don't know about anyone else, but December was crazy busy. Um, maybe about a week ago, two weeks ago. Time's gone, this is 2020, time means nothing. Um, but I made like 500 cookies for Christmas and I'm tired. So I didn't read that many books, but I'm on vacation. So I guess for the month I read five books, which actually like is a lot, but I did postpone recording this video because I wanted to add this last book that I read because it was really good. Not gonna lie, I'm like tapped out of reading. So there are seven-ish days left of 2020 and I'm taking a reading sabbatical. Like I'm, I'm done reading for the year. So for December, I read five books and the first book that I read, I did mention in my last video, I was reading the third book of the two All the Boys I Loved Before series, Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han. So this last book in the series is obviously a continuation. Lara Jean and the crew are just finishing up high school, putting in their college applications and seeing where they're gonna go. Lara Jean and Peter have a plan that they're gonna go to the same school together and all is well until it's not. Peter gets a scholarship and Lara Jean just didn't hear from the school for a really long time. She was getting really stressed out. Like Lara Jean, I noticed that I tend to bake a lot when I'm stressed. So again, your kindred spirits, Lara Jean and I. But she had so much to look forward to and then just stress and we can all relate to that. But her head is saying logical things, like where to go to school, like the logistics. And her heart is wanting to be a Peter, so there's that whole how does it end. And this one might have been my favorite of the series. I loved it. Lara Jean, I really related to her character on so many levels. Like she liked like boring old stuff. She liked baking, hopeless romantic. Thinks real life is like... Um, like the movies, and I get that, I am that. So I really loved her, I loved her love story with Peter, and it was just a really great culmination, wrapping it up with a bow, and it was beautiful. I actually rated it a 4.5 on Goodreads. In hindsight, I'm noticing when I rate things, my feelings might change over time, but this has been like a solid three, four weeks after reading the book, and my rating stands. It's for sure a four and a half out of five. I recommend it to anyone. Like. I recommend the whole series. If you've seen the movie on Netflix, I recommend that too. If you haven't seen the, rec the movie on Netflix, what are you waiting for? The whole thing's so good. And now I absolutely cannot wait for part three. When it finally does air, it is so good, so cute. And you're not gonna regret it, that's all I can say. So the second book I read this month was to cultivate that Christmas vibe. I wanted a Christmas Hallmark vibe in my life, all the cookies, all the things, minus the snow, and started off our first book of December for Christmas reading One Day in December by Josie Silver. This book started off really great and then it just went wild. So it's a love story about what happens when you meet or don't meet the one. Uh, the main character, her name is Lori, and one day she's on a bus, she looks out of the window, and just she sees the love of her life there, but it was a misconnection, they didn't see each other, he didn't get on the bus, and then she spends the next couple years looking for him. Fast forward two years or so, and she's at a party with her roommate and best friend, and her best friend introduces her to her new boyfriend, the love of her life, which is the same guy. So she has to either decide whether she wants to like tell her friend, hey, the guy that we've been looking for for the last two years is your boyfriend, or just you know get over her feelings and support her friend in that relationship. And so she chose the latter. And then it just goes to the whole progression of like, does she suppress her feelings? Does she get over him? Does he remember her? What happens? Um, so originally I rated this book like a three and a half out of five 
And then I sat with it. And here we are, two weeks later, and I'm so confused. Like a lot of it was really confusing. First of all, it's called One Day in December, but it's not like, I guess, one day in December, she looked out the window, saw a guy, but it's a progression of maybe five years or so. It was, it was really long to get anywhere, which I find happens with a lot of books. 60% of the way is where things tend to pick up. This was also the first Reese's Book Club book that I read that didn't hit it. It's not a bad book by any means. It just wasn't, it wasn't to my standards for Reese Witherspoon. We'll just say that. There was no depth to anyone. Like, do I really know Lori? Do I know Sarah? I certainly don't know Oliver. It was not overly Christmassy. Um, I actually don't think Christmas was like, uh, underlying theme in the book but three and a half because it wasn't the worst book I've ever read um, but I definitely won't read it again it just it was weird um, I've heard a couple reviews from a couple other people on who have been messaging on my bookstagram and they kind of feel the same way just what is this book but if you liked it let me know why because I don't see it the third book I read was our Redheads Book Club book of the month, which is Layla by Colleen Hoover. If you have not read a Colleen Hoover book, you are missing out. She is fabulous. Um, I wouldn't even put her in the YA category. Just everything she's written is pure magic. Um, her most popular book of the year, I would probably say is Verity, and a lot of people start with that one. And when Layla, um, was first announced. It only came out sometime in December, so it's a very new book. And if you do have Kindle Unlimited, it is on there, so you have no excuse, it's free. But when this book came out, a lot of people compared it to Verity, that whole psychological thriller. I personally wouldn't compare it to Verity. It's very different, but nonetheless, it was good. The book explores the life after a tragedy with our two main characters, Leeds and Layla. Leeds is in a band, he meets Layla at one of his gigs. They instantly fall in love, have this connection. Tragedy strikes and then just she's different and he can't figure out what it is about her that's different. So to rekindle a relationship, they go back to the place where they first met to see if they could rekindle that. And he, he meets a ghost, I guess. Yeah, and then things just go haywire. So I can't spoil it because if I say anything else, you'll know where I'm going with that. But it wasn't a bad book, nothing like Verity. It was very weird though. Um, the whole time reading it, I was kind of thinking, this is stupid. And then when you get to the conclusion, which it's very exciting and a lot happens, it's still kind of stupid. I did give it a five out of five on Goodreads. Colleen Hoover, I honestly think she can do no wrong when it comes to writing a book. And even though this book was dumb, I'd read it again. Unlike the previous book, you do feel for the characters, although 15 minutes from now, I will once again forget that Leeds is the main character's name because he's kind of forgettable. It's not gonna keep you on your toes, It's, but it will keep you moving. It wasn't a bad book and I finished it in a day. Most people who have read this have finished it in a day. And I'm hearing good reviews back. I'm also hearing it's no verity, so. Do yourself a favor and read both. The next book I read was another Christmas one to get us in the spirit. Everyone has been talking about this book all year, In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. So our main character, Maylin, has this tradition of her family and her parents' best friends from college. Um, their family's all getting together at a cabin for Christmas every year. It's her favorite thing, her favorite time of year, and it's her favorite place to be. But after spending um, Christmas with the crew and having a not so lovely encounter, she gets stuck in kind of like a Christmas version of Groundhog Day and keeps repeating Christmas until hopefully she can get it right. And she has to try and figure out what is the thing that I need to change or get right so we can get out of this continuous loop. So this is where I fell into my book rut for December. I, have, I was tired. This book probably would have normally fit, taken me three or four days to finish, and it took well over a week. Also, I was only reading this book between like 12.30 and 1.30 a.m. every day, so I wasn't getting too far until I passed out. But I liked it. I gave it a four and a half out of five. 
it was really cute. Like the concept of the Groundhog Day was kind of funny. Um, her reaction to it was really relatable. Like if you were stuck in this time warp of say, doing like December 20th to 26th, over and over, but you know what's gonna happen. You know when dad eats those cookies, he's gonna ch uh, chip his tooth. You know the dog's gonna eat the guy you like's favorite Christmas sweater. I think I'd react the same way. Great book, loved it. I kinda wanna read more books uh, by this author, and I see why it was the big name holiday book of the season. Um, I recommend it. Definitely Hallmarky vibes to get you into that Christmassy spirit. Now that Christmas is over, I guess no one's reading Christmas books right now, but if you're like me and it's Christmas all year in your heart, go for it. Otherwise, wait till next year, I guess. Then my goal, like my hope after that book was to read some easy books to, you know, finish off the month. And so I next read Royal Holiday. It's, I guess, part of the, the wedding date series, which is a series I've never heard of, but it's by Jasmine Gulleroy. It's about a woman in about her 50s who takes a spontaneous vacation with her daughter to go and spend Christmas at, um, in England with the Royals at, San I can't even say that name, wherever William and Kate live. Anyways, so she's staying with the Duke and the Duchess. Her daughter is a personal stylist, I believe. Um, and it's just her once in a lifetime vacation. She never goes out. She's a social worker at home. She doesn't take vacation. Why not? They go on this vacation and she meets a guy, a man, who is the uh, private secretary of the queen. And then they end up kind of falling in love. But is it really falling in love when you're only on vacation for two weeks and you're going to go back home? So it was a cute story. It's, it's really funny because the, the characters are in their like 50s and they're having this kind of immature, I guess, romance. And it seems very young adults kind of love story but then you have to remember like no she's definitely in her 50s also as we know i love a story that has to do with the royals anything with queenie vibes is right up my alley it doesn't explicitly say who your duke and duchess are i don't even think they have names in this book but in my mind's eye this is for real william and kate when she runs into the queen it is elizabeth and beautiful loved it i gave it a three and a half out of five because a cute love story with that royal tie-in, but I don't know, wasn't the best book I've ever read, but for that holiday vibe, good book. And then the last book that I read for the month was a fluke. I read it yesterday, start to finish. So Christmas Eve, one last book, and it was because on someone's Instagram, I'm sorry, I forget who you were, but you gave it a five out of five rating, and you weren't wrong. That book was Faking Under the Mistletoe by Ashley Shepard. Our protagonist, Olivia, is like the human embodiment of Christmas. She loves Christmas and she is the social coordinator or whatever of her company and she's just planning pretty much two months of Christmas events for her for her office. So she's doing like skating. She, she threw in all the holidays too. She had like menorah lighting, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, she's a, she's an assistant to one of like the boss, I guess, his son, and he's the complete opposite of her. Hates Christmas, kind of hates everything. Very grumpy, doesn't talk to anyone, and everyone just kind of pegged him as antisocial, hates everything, Scrooge, grumpy. Um, but now this makes her, in addition to her regular Christmas cheer, love to get on his nerves. Like you're his assistant, what can you do? I don't know, order him six Christmas treats to go into his apartment or order him Christmas bed sheets and have them delivered. So that kind of became her fun and her goal, but she's hiding a secret as to why she likes Christmas so much and why she puts so much effort into it. And as per usual, it's gonna be a love story. So this one was kind of a Hallmark vibe, but not quite. Uh, as soon as you open the book, it did have a trigger warning for sexual assault, which I thought was super weird considering this is a Christmas book and it's supposed to be like happy times. Um, but it was legit. And that is a underlying um, theme kind of in the book. It, it, it's a thing. But aside from that, great. I actually really liked it. So that person who gave it a five out of five, you were absolutely not wrong. I did give it a four and a half though, but I did like it, loved it. It was so cute. And I think part of the reason why you love the book so much is because 
the character of Olivia is just so fun. She is Christmas. She is who I think I am in my head. Because she's just so bubbly and so great and so happy and everything, you can't help but love her. And you also can't help but root for her when her boss is like, you're the most irritating person. You're like, yeah, but she's fun. I recommend it. Um, like I said, it does have that trigger warning, but it's a really quick read. You'll finish it in a day and it won't leave you with a pit, even though it has some yucky, yucky parts, but whatever. Anyways, those are the five books, I think that was five, that I read this month. And now for the year end roundup. So for the whole year of 2020, AKA the world's longest year, because I don't even remember January, I read 74 books. My goal was 60 books. We hit that a long time ago in October and we're finishing off at 74. I do not want to read another book to make it 75. I'm tired, so we're done here. But I went through all the books that I read to see what were the best books that I read this year and what would I recommend to all of you. So if you're, I'm gonna give you some book recs to take into 2021, here they are. So the first book that I'm recommending, and I think it's the first book that I read for the year, um, was Open Book by Jessica Simpson. Huge hype surrounding this book when it came out, and it feels like it was five years ago when it came out. I think it was January, but it feels so long ago. But before reading this book, I didn't even know that I was as big of a Jessica Simpson fan as I am. Um, she probably had like three songs that I ever heard of. I haven't seen Dukes of Hazard. So really, I like Jessica Simpson for absolutely no reason. But after reading this book, it gives you reason, it gives you context, and She's just so real. Um, she's not, you know, the dumb blonde that everyone tried to paint her as over the years. She's hilarious. The book is written probably how I assume she does talk. Um, it gets really deep at parts. It gets into the whole newlyweds of it all with her and Nick Lachey. And so the rise and fall of that relationship. Um, but just really, really good. It was a fairly big book. Like I did buy the physical copy, the hardcover, and it's 416 pages, but it was 460 pages of pure gold. And I heard if you get the audio book or the, some type of a digital copy, you will get um, new songs by Jessica Simpson. So that is a win-win for you. Um, the second book that I recommend for you to take into 2021. I've already mentioned Verity by Colleen Hoover. Probably one of the best books I've read all year. It took me one day to read because you do not want to put it down when you start reading. It is the psychological thriller that they advertise. Dang, that book was just bonkers. Like you read it, you're on the edge of your seat the whole time, then everything flips and you don't know what to do and you keep reading because you don't know what's happening and the book's done and I still think about it all the time. I don't even know where I stand on, on the book, where it left me, but it was so good. Also, I don't like like scary things. I don't like scary movies. I don't like October. And this was one of those books that I put into the category of like spooky season, but it was worth it. It was great. If you haven't read anything Colleen Hoover, start here and you'll be hooked. Um, I also recommend Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. Another young adults book. I don't know if it's the first book that I read by her, but it's it's the best, but it also, she's become one of my favorite authors just from reading these couple books. Um, this was one of the Redheads book club books of the month earlier on in the year, Snitch's Choice, but it's, you're, like, it's a misconnection story, second chance at love, and it was just really good. I think I love a, a love story that's very, what would you call P.S. I Love You? That's not a rom-com. A romantic movie, it's not a rom-com. I don't know what you call that that genre. It's very just romantic and lovey and Nicholas Sparksy, but I'm not a fan of Nicholas Sparks by any means. But it is in that kind of realm. Just you, you, you're rooting for those characters to fall back in love and they do have challenges. And the, I find the way that Renee Carlino writes, it's very realistic, it's not, it's not far-fetched, like you could see yourself in those characters or see a friend in those characters. And I really love that story. I think every time I read a Renee, Renee Carlino book, I cry after. Um, pretty much all of them have cried. And I don't cry a lot, but they're good. So <laughs> I recommend it. 
and I think it is in that YA category, but it is, it's just so stinking adorable. Anyways, uh, number four that I recommend is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I could not put this book down. Um, I think I read it in probably two days, and it's because I forced myself to sleep. The first night I stopped reading it around 4.30 in the morning just because it was so good. It is very old Hollywood. Um, you have an actress and she's just telling you about her life and the loves that she's had and the, the, the many loves that she's had. And so they're saying like, who was your greatest love? And she said, I can't just tell you who my greatest love was. I have to give you the whole backstory. And um, growing up with my parents, I watched a lot of old movies and like Turner classic movies. Even now we're watching Turner classic movies. So it has that vibe in those old Hollywood actresses and you rags to riches story where she kind of came from nothing, became this huge successful movie star, um, very Elizabeth Taylor vibes where she has so many husbands. Now the tabloids are like, who's next? And it was really sweet. And just how she told the story, how she wanted to tell the story. Um, this is the same author who wrote Daisy Jones in the six, which is really popular. I have not read it. And I hear mixed reviews, so I'm just not there yet. But this one, highly recommend. Um, the story stuck with me. It's been months and I love it. I think about it all the time. I'd probably read it again. I really, really, really liked it. And the last book that I'd recommend for the year was The Last Mrs. Parrish. I've read maybe six books of the same idea over the course of the year. And so they all kind of meld together. But this one I really remember because it's written in two parts. You have like the current Mrs. Parrish in part two and this person who's trying to, I guess, trying to steal her husband. And so at the beginning of the book, you're rooting for her because you're like, well, Mrs. Parrish sucks and he deserves you and you deserve this. And then you get to part two and you're like, whoa, everything flips. And it's, you feel so satisfied at the end, how it ends. Um, things go wild halfway through it's one of the, i love a book that just flips on the end and you, you're shocked um and a lot of books also don't get good until 60 percent of the way through this one's good from the beginning you are so engaged in part one and then part two slaps you in the face so i highly recommend that one so those are the 2020 books that i read for the year that i recommend to you as well as my five books for the month of december I'm taking a break, but very much looking forward to starting to read again in 2021. I haven't figured out what my goal is going to be in 2021. Um, this year I read 60 books. Next year, who knows where life will take us. So I think I'm gonna start out with a 70 book goal and then see how this, this plays out. We'll see reevaluate in June or so. But I wanna hear from you in the comments. What is the best book? that you read this year or in your lifetime if you didn't read a lot this year but I think the best books that I've written have been or the best books that I've read have been referred from other people so I want to hear your referrals of your favorite books but thank you so much for following along with this book journey of 2020 and we'll see where 2021 takes us please hit that like and subscribe button as well you can follow me on my personal Instagram or my bookstagram and that's a wrap on 2020. So I will see you in the next video next year.